session is John Fisher, who is um, interestingly enough Bernie's uh, grandchild in many ways. Uh, uh, Sean is Sean is in uh, Michelle Stone Lee's group at the University of Washington, and will be telling us about some of their most recent work using the Aaron Fest Dynamics approach in studying United States. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for letting me come and talk. And as uh, Aaron said, I'll be talking about our development of uh, kind of mixing together service hopping and Aaron Fest to uh, do, look at uh, excited state dynamics. So the motivation here is that we want to look at big systems. Uh, what we have here is uh, just the excited states of this uh, 66 atom zinc oxide uh, quantum dot. And so as you can see, uh, you have a lot of states here. Things get very dense, and that can become very complicated if you want to look at non-adiabatic dynamics where you're making transitions between uh, electronic states. So, and it is, can we simplify this picture? Um, two of the most popular methods for doing non adiabatic dynamics are surface hopping and earth vest. Uh, under surface hopping, what you have is uh, your picture doesn't really change. Uh, you pick a starting point and uh, you launch a swarm of trajectories, and they're all independent and they start uh, propagating through space and they can switch electronic states at different times essentially uh, with the hopping probability por proportional to the coupling between the states, and uh, you get your population uh, evolution out by averaging over these swarm of trajectories that you launched. Uh, benefit to the surface hopping method is you, you include uh, explicitly electron nuclear correlation, um, but it can be very expensive for large systems because you have to actually consider explicitly all of these excited states. So if you have a lot of excited states, that's a lot of states you have to find, a lot of couplings between states you have to find. Uh, Ernfest is a much simpler idea, uh, or Ernfest, or I refer to it often as mean field, uh, where you take all of your electronic states and you average, average them all together, and then you propagate your nuclear degrees of freedom along a single average potential. So this one becomes rather simple and straightforward. Uh, you only have to deal with one trajectory, and you move on the single potential, and you don't actually have to explicitly look at any uh, excited states. You can propagate through a superposition state, and you don't actually have to ever calculate you know, explicitly excited states or, exc or uh, electronic state couplings. But because of this, you lack explicit correlation between electron and nuclear degrees of freedom. So it's much in like electronic structure theory, this is kind of like a Hartree-Fock version of nuclear dynamics. But what if we uh, what if we kind of go for an in-between road? And so we uh, want to look at, mostly we look at systems that have a, a band gap, and so we have a separated ground state, but a, a dense collection of excited states. So what if, instead of averaging all the states together, we just average all the excited states together and leave the ground state out, and then we look at hopping between the ground state and our average excited state. And so that's what we've developed. We've called it surface hopping with Ernfest excited potential, or SHEET for short. Uh, so it combines two aspects of these methods, as I said, and the aim was to kind of retain the accuracy that surface hopping has displayed while uh, we try to reduce the computational cost by using an average excited state instead of explicit excited states. So we represent all the excited states by a single mean field state, and then we hop between the ground state and the excited state. So, uh, to break it down, as far as the electronic degrees of freedom are concerned, they get treated the same way you would in Nernfest or surface hopping. You propagate your electronic Schrodinger, time dependent electronic Schrodinger equation, where we expand in some basis. So we have the equation of motion for the expansion coefficients here. So that, uh, as far as the electrons concerned, all the states are there. Everything's treated the same way you would for either of the other two methods. Where we get different is when we look at the nuclear evolution. So as far as the nuclei are concerned, there's only two states that it could propagate on, either the ground state or the uh, excited state, or one or average excited state. So our uh, electronic wave function, you know, you can think of it as expanding in two bases here, where the first one is just the ground, the ground state, and then the other one is the linear combination of all the excited states. Uh, then we make use of Tully's fewest switches, uh, hopping probability,